up. This is an introduction to anodic stripping voltammetry or ASV. ASV is an electrochemical technique that requires several steps, but before we describe those steps, it's important to appreciate the significance that this, techni this technique has in modern science. Here is a picture of the Phoenix Mars lander that was equipped with an electrochemical analyzer. Not surprisingly, one of the analyzers was an, an ASB component that allowed to determine how different metals and species exist on the surface of the red planet. The principle of the technique consists of three separate steps, preconcentration, pass, and stripping. What we have in this diagram are each of these different steps. And here we have the representation of an electrode, and here we have the representation of a metal represented by a cation, N, N+. In the first step, the preconcentration step, the cations are deposited onto the surface of the electrode to form the metal M. In the second step, we have a pause that basically stops all steering and movement of the solution so that a new equilibrium is established nearby the electron. And the third step consists of reversing the potential of the electrode so that the metal gets released out onto a solution. At the bottom of this, we have a representation of the potential versus time that is applied at each of the different steps. Negative potential to cause reduction, then reduction still being applied during the deposition but without steering, and then finally oxidation in which we actually make the potential more positive so that the metal can be removed from the surface of the electrode. It's important as well to understand what is happening very close to the surface of the electrode. This diagram shows the main components at the surface of the electrode. We have oxidized species represented by OX and reduced species represented by RED. Here we have the electrode and as we can see here, right at the electrode surface, the process of electron transfer will happen or will result on the addition of an electrode to the oxidized species to produce a reduced species. In addition to that, close to the electrode, there is a layer of solution which doesn't really move, it's stagnant. And in that particular region, there might be some other chemical and physical changes to the oxidized species. And far, far away from the surface of the electrode, there is the bulk solution in which the reservoir of all the oxidized species stay and remain. Theoretically, the transfer from the bulk solution to the close, closer to the stagnant layer to the electrode is done through the process of mass transfer. This is a very important process during the deposition that happens during, during ASB. However, when we go to the later stages, which is the removal of the uh, reduced metal from the surface of the electrode, when the voltage is reversed to become more positive, then the opposite process will happen, which is the oxidation of the reduced species to become oxidized, and then the process will happen in the opposite direction, releasing the oxidized species towards that. So what we will be doing in the next slides is to illustrate in more detail what happens in each of these different processes. But let's begin first by looking at the, how the different regions, the bulk solution, the stagnant layer, and the electrode interact when we actually talk about the movement of the species that we have here. This technique, ASB, requires the steering of solution so that we have a turbulent region we have an area where there is laminar flow and very close to the surface of the electrode we're going to have this stagnant solution or stagnant layer called the Nernst diffusion layer. This is where a lot of the electrochemical uh, conditions that are important for quantitative analysis take place. During deposition we also observe several stages at which the reduction of the species represented here by A to form the product P will occur. 
Here we have a diagram representing the surface of the electrode and the distance from the surface of the electrode. And we have the stagnant region or the nurse diffusion layer and the stirred solution. What we can see here is that at, at time zero, the concentration of the species A, the oxidized species, is going to be basically the same all the way across far away in the bulk solution up to the surface of the electrode. However, at a given time, say for instance represented by X here, reduction will begin. As time continues, the reduction will continue so that the concentration of the oxidized species, CA, is now half of what the initial concentration was in the bulk solution. And later on, when en enough time has happened, the oxidized uh, pieces are basically reduced totally to zero at the surface of the electrode and only the, the product is formed here. The process described here happens extremely fast and is, is something that we normally don't notice during the ASB part because it happens just at the beginning of that. However, what we can see here is that as the oxidized species disappears, the reduced species will form on the surface of the electrode. So now let's go back and look at the three different steps that we mentioned before. And we'll focus on the last step, which is the oxidation. During that step, we are reversing the voltage to now bring the metal deposited on the surface of the electrode back into solution as a cation or an oxidized species. When that happens, we can monitor the current that results from that process. And that is what we call the plot or voltammogram of current versus anodic voltage. Here we have a voltammogram showing the change in current as a function of potential, illustrating that as the potential gets more positive, species will be re released from the electrode and that is going to cause a positive current in this, in, as shown here. The area of this diagram here on this voltammogram is proportional to the analyte amount. If a high concentration or high amount of this analyte is preconcentrated on the electrode, the current that we get here, the area that we'll get here will be much larger. And this is the principle for quantification of this particular technique that allows to concentrate very low levels of an analyte. How are these measurements done? For that, we use a setup that consists of a three electrodes. Here is a diagram of, 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 of a three electrode cell configuration. We will start by reviewing what is the function of each of these different electrodes. The first electrode is the working electrode, represented in this diagram by this, by this bar. The working electrode is the one that will experience the change in potential that ch during the experiment. It is the one that was, represent that was represented in the previous diagrams. The second electrode is the reference electrode. The reference electrode is typically a silver chloride electrode and allows any measurement that is done in terms of potential to, to be relative to this electrode that has a constant potential. It's very reliable, very robust. And finally, we have the counter electrode. The counter electrode is usually a platinum wire which is inert and provides the way to conduct electricity in the circuit from the source. We also have nitrogen. Nitrogen is important to be released to create an inert atmosphere because if nitrogen is not delivered, oxygen will be present and that will cause the interference with the analysis that, that is being carried out. The, that is because the oxidation and reduction potential usually have a very narrow range which will interfere with analysis. Another component of this system is an inert supporting electrolyte which is a salt that does not experience oxidation or reduction, which is at high concentration relative to other species and prevents the migration of reactants due to the electric field close to the surface of the electrode, in this case the working electrode. And finally we have the steering bar that allows us to mix the solution as was described in the previous steps, which is required to bring or to facilitate the transport from the bulk solution to the surface of the electrode. This type of very simple instrumentation then allows the, the scientist 
to, to, to monitor very low levels of analyte in, uh, by uh, ASB. And one more detail about this consists of describing the electrode, the working electrode that is used to, this, to do this type of analysis, which is typically a carbon electrode that has the capability of, rotate, of rotating very fast in solution so that it decreases, this, decreases the size of the stern layer. The typical voltages for this electrode are, lim are defined by the limits of the oxidation of water and the reduction of water. Any species that has a reduction potential within this range can be analyzed by, I, by ASB. Here we have examples of uh, stripping voltammetry analysis. Anodic, cathodic, and absorptive stripping voltammetry. And as we can see here, in all of this, the idea is that we can pre-concentrate the species so that the levels of detection are much lower. In this experiment, we are going to be focusing on cations, in particularly those such as copper and lead. For more information on this technique, see the textbook Skug, Holler and Crouch, Principles of Instrumental Analysis, 6th edition.